I want to take a look at this item. It's made by uh, Batter Planetarium and Astrophysics. It's a combination. It is the 10 by 60 Varial Finder with Quick Release Guider Bracket Kit. And as supplied by Astrophysics, it is the number 1060VGKIT. This is a 61 millimeter diameter F4 objective with uh, a 250 millimeter focal length. The cost of the kit is $570. So I'm going to go through and show you the different configurations of uh, this kit. This item included in the kit is the T2 extension tube, 40 millimeters long. It's the astrophysics part number BP25C. This extension tube is a T2 extension tube which is 15 millimeters long. And it is the Astrophysics part number BP25A. Now this little item in here in the bag is uh, a small dovetail sh shoe. And you can use this in place of the Astrophysics bracket. So you can attach this finder to a tripod and then use it as a spotting scope or a small travel scope. And there's your tapped quarter 20 holes. And then it comes with a thumb screw here. Now as you see the setup that I have here with the 45 degree prism and the illuminated reticle, if you wanted to use this as a finder, again with the 45 degree prism, you cannot use the backside bracket that uh, would keep the extension tubes up rigid with the finder body. So that fits right here. And so all you've got to do is take that off. You need a 5.30 seconds Allen wrench. And you take that off so you can use it as seen here. All right, let's take a look at it the way in the configuration that I have at the moment. Again, as a finder, uh, you've got the cap for the lens. You've got a dew shield that comes out. There's the lens. Okay guys, when it comes to focusing, you have 12 millimeters of travel on the objective cell. There's the locking ring, you would loosen it up, turn this, rotate it to where you want it and lock it. And you then you also have, back here, you have this to focus. Loosen the thumb screw, and this gives you 35 millimeters of travel. You see it's graduated. What I ended up doing is I put the summer in the middle of the travel. Then I loosen this up, turn the objective lens until it was in focused at infinity, turn the locking ring so the objective would no longer move. And now it's just a matter of whenever I'm focusing, moving back and forth. And I have found with what I have here, uh, I can do a close focus of right around 8 to 10 feet. Uh, 
if that's something you'd want to do like again if you want to use this as a small spotting scope so and with this um, erecting prism here everything is is uh, excellent to use for terrestrial use now to focus in the reticle in here you use this up here whatever eye you're using look through here and just rotate this up here until the reticle comes snaps in nice and sharp okay here's a close-up of the 45 degree erecting prism it's got an inch and a quarter nose piece with t-threads and the eyepiece is 25 millimeters with variable brightness illuminated measuring reticle again this is how you focus the reticle in to get it sharp for your eye this goes into the draw tube the clamp and this is really nice this is how you adjust the brightness of the reticle you'll see that dot there that is zero then you go to one and you can go either direction 11 is the brightest zeros off one is the dimmest so if you were starting here you could go to 11 right away if you knew that you wanted something brighter so one is the dimmest and then it successively gets brighter at each setting and it's got nice click stops very positive not sloppy at all extremely well constructed now to change the battery it does take a uh, CR2032 and we can just take it off with that nice machined cover it's aluminum no plastic so that's the battery cover And this is the battery inside. And this fits right, it's machined right in there. Nothing sloppy at all about that. Very nice. Next, we're going to take a look at the inch and a quarter locking ring here that holds the erecting prism and as you can see it does use brass so it's not just a set screw pushing up against this tube it's actually a brass ring that it's pushing against. Quality throughout. Next, I'm going to change the configuration to straight through. So if you wanted to use this straight through without the 45 degree erecting prism, or you wanted to attach a guiding camera, you would use the straight through configuration. So what we'll do here is take the erecting prism off. We 
going to take off the inch and a quarter adapter. Now while I've got that off, I'll show you on this end the draw tube. It can't go all the way in. It's got a lip on it. Next thing I've got to do is put this back bracket on that I took off and um, grab my 5.30 seconds. I'm going there. And then that's notched so that fits in here. I want to take my erecting prism and detach it from the illuminated reticle. Here's a close-up of the reticle. I'll turn the brightest light on. Obviously it's hard to see because it's daylight. But that's what that looks like. There's one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and back off. Next, we want to screw in our 40 millimeter extension tube that we have. next extension tube I'm going to put in is the 15 millimeter and finally the illuminated reticle eyepiece goes in next and this will complete the straight through finder scope setup just like that now you don't have to, I don't always, but you can, once you get this focused, you could tighten these down, but that's more or less just if you're going to use a guiding camera back here, then you want the whole, whole optical train, um, the finder body up front, and then back here on the extension tube that you would have your guide camera, and then you would tighten this down. I don't but it's fine for uh, a finder and um, I like to keep this thing on when I'm straight through which is the way I really use it and then that way you don't lose pieces less chance of losing it and it doesn't get in the way and as you can see here I've got this loose it's all the way out all the way in all the way out all the way in so now when I store this, when I'm done with it, I just leave it just like that. Now I do want to point out these two areas here with these set screws in there. You would take those out 
and those would be replaced with the screws here that came with this small dovetail shoe okay and I'm not going to take it apart and do it but that would go on like this and then that would allow you to attach quarter 20 whatever position you wanted and use this as a small spotting scope those are the two screws those are the only ones around the perimeter of the uh, back side on the focusing end and those two holes there that you see those counterboard holes they would go just like that so the reason for having this kind of a setup like this again is to ensure that you have a flexure free structure to hold your uh, guide camera because the entire guide scope configuration is attached directly to your telescope rather than the scope's rings guiding will follow your scope's movement not that of the scope's rings and mounting plates so that ensures that you get the imaging results that you will seek now if we take a look at uh, just the uh, guide scope dovetail bar which is this the guide scope dovetail bar the rear and the front piece here with the nylon thumb screws that is the 10 by 60 quick release guider bracket and if you got that separate that is an S1060 QRGB you also get with the kit this base for the uh, quick release guider bracket it is the number Q-R-B-A-S-E-G. So this base allows the dovetail to slide in here. And from what I understand, what I've read on there, it's got this type of uh, padding material that doesn't crush, but will help prevent any marring of your telescope. these nice stainless thumb screws and as you can see got little spot faces here and so depending where you want to put this so that it doesn't slide you just put this line it up near a spot face I move it just a little bit it's on the spot face there and you can just tighten these down so you can kind of use this to adjust the the weight the balance and it also has a tap toe here I ended up uh, this is an extra base I have for the one that's on my scope I bought extra one of these and I put one here so I actually have three. So I just go there and I it's in the spot face. Now if you want to get extra guide scope dovetail bars that you see right here, you can order those. I did get some they're $48 a piece when I bought them and the item number from Astrophysics is an A3247-A -A. now the base you can get those um, they're $50 each it is the Astrophysics item number QRBA S E G now your configuration may vary again I'm not using a guide camera so I can't say how that setup would look your extension tubes you'd use uh, would be different but for using it with a 45 degree erecting prism or straight through it should work out exactly as I have here and one final thing the nylon uh, thumb screws that are used 
as you see here in case you're wondering those are 10 32s and the threaded portion is one half inches long